Are you looking to learn more about how the voice works? Well, today we're going to go through the anatomy and a little bit of the physiology. So the structure and a little bit of the function about how the voice works. Hi, I'm Stacey Menton from SingingMamasHomestead.com where we provide information for singers and professional voice users who are looking to learn more about vocal health and hygiene on a path to whole person wellness. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the different structures of the voice. Now before we get started, I want to make sure that I give you kind of an overall view of that there, there are actually three subsystems to the voice. The first is respiration, so the lungs and the trachea and airway. The second is actual phonation, so the larynx, the voice box, and the vibration of the vocal folds. And then the third is the mouth, throat, and nasal passages. <clears throat> so the, what we're going to talk about today is just the structures from bottom to top, um, but it'll be a general overview. I'm not going to go into a crazy amount of detail today, but newer posts coming out um, will go into further detail um, over the year. All right, so let's first talk about the lungs and the airway. So there's um, several muscles involved with res respiration, the diaphragm, the abdominal muscles themselves in the front, and the intercostals, which are the um, muscles in between the ribs. So those muscles work to help with inhalation and exhalation. Um, the diaphragm is a domed muscle that sits right below the lungs. The lungs are actually attached to it. Um, and it, it's domed, but when we breathe in, it actually flattens. That flattening changes the air pressure in the lungs such that air automatically flows into the lungs because the pressure becomes lower in the lungs. So the diaphragm flattens, changes the pressure, air comes in. Air comes through the windpipe and into the tubes in the lungs and there's an oxygen exchange that happens then. So the oxygen that comes in is fed out to the blood and then the waste product, which is CO2, from the blood is exchanged and the lungs exhale that out. Now the muscles involved in this, obviously the inhale, the diaphragm comes down. But when we go to exhale, the simplified version of this would be that the abdominal muscles push against the viscera, which are like your, your guts colloquially, but basically like your intestines and all the organs that are in your belly. Um, the abdominal muscles push against them, which pushes against the diaphragm to push air out and also the intercostals, the, rib, the muscles between the ribs help. Um, there's actually two different sets of intercostals. Internal intercostals help with expiration, so pushing out, and then the external intercostals actually help swing the rib cage out to increase the um, area within the lungs and decrease that pressure again. The lungs kind of expand and contract based on airflow. Now, that airflow, once it is coming into the lungs, it goes through the mouth, through the voice box, through the trachea, which is the windpipe, and then it splits into two main bronchi, which are just additional tubes basically, that go down into the lungs, and then it splits even further into what's called bronchioles. So that is the lungs in general. On top of the windpipe, on top of the trachea, sit the voice box. So the voice box or the larynx sits right on the top of the windpipe. The vocal folds are the last method of protection before that windpipe. And the air coming through them is what makes the vocal folds vibrate. Now the larynx is made up of several different cartilages and one bone. Um, well, it's made up mostly of several different cartilages. It suspends from one bone. So we're going to go through those first and then we'll go through the muscles. So the Larynx is um, made up of a thyroid cartilage, a cricoid cartilage, two arytenoid cartilages, and then on the ends of the arytenoid cartilages are these things called the cuneiform and corniculate cartilages, they're just tiny little bones. And then there's this thing called the epiglottis that is a flap that folds over when we swallow to protect the airway. 
It's also used coincidentally whenever you're creating a whistle register. So the, the thyroid cartilage is like a shield shaped cartilage and you can actually feel it. It's where your Adam's apple is. And that actually right below the notch of your Adam's apple, that is where your vocal folds actually sit. So the thyroid cartilage is in the front. Beneath that is the cricoid cartilage, which looks like a signet ring. So it's kind of thick in the back and then thinner in the front. Um, and the thyroid cartilage sits on the cor cricoid cartilage in the front. And then in the back, the two arytenoid cartilages sit on the cricoid cartilage. And they're responsible for opening and closing the vocal folds. Um, and then the epiglottis sits right above the thyroid cartilage and that's that flap that kind of folds down over. Um, now the muscles of the larynx are, there are several. So there's intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the larynx. Today I am only going to cover the intrinsic muscles because those are the muscles that are mostly used for voicing or what should always be used for voicing. The extrinsic muscles are really meant to be used for swallowing, but they do sometimes end up getting used for voicing. And that's a pattern that we usually work um, on reducing both as voice teachers and as speech pathologists who are treating the voice because patients start to use these extra muscles that aren't meant to be used for voicing and then the voice gets tired. So um, in retraining the voice, we, we tend to try to reduce all the extra muscle tension around here. All right, so those intrinsic muscles, there are two tensor muscles, this is what we tend to call them, um, called the thyroarytenoid muscle, which actually sits right, on, it's the muscle of the vocal folds themselves. So it starts at the front in a V, um, it attaches to the thyroid cartilage, and then in the back it attaches to those arytenoid cartilages. So we start in that V with the thyroarytenoid muscles. Now, the other tensor muscles are called the cricothyroid muscles. These are muscles that are actually in the front of the voice box, and they help with pitch um, by tensing. And then they relax, and that lowers the pitch. When they tense, the pitch goes up. Um, kind of opposite with the thyroarytenoid muscle. If, it, if the thyroarytenoid muscle tenses, it creates more bulk, which makes the pitch go down. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in the physiology um, Posts that I'm planning on creating. So you have the thyroarytenoid muscle and the cricothyroid muscle. Those are our tensors. Then you have the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles, or the LCA, um, as well as the interarytenoid muscles. So the LCA is lateral to the cricoid and the arytenoids, and it um, attaches, and that's what pulls the vocal folds closed. Um, and then the inner arytenoids help with closure in the far back of the vocal folds closure. They kind of cross like this. They're, um, they're, they're just meant to kind of pull the arytenoids a little bit tighter. Those muscles are the two that are responsible for closure, although some other muscles play in too. Um, like the thyroarytenoid muscle also helps with closure slightly. Um, all right, and then there's one set of muscles that opens the vocal folds, and those are the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. So they help open the vocal folds. All right, and then the last thing I wanna talk about today um, is something, I'm gonna talk in general. I am not gonna talk about all the different muscles that make up the tongue and the soft palate um, and the structures that kind of make all of that up. Let's just say that you have bone at first and cartilage at the top here um, where your teeth meet and then all the way back and then it starts to become more um, thin and then eventually it becomes just muscle and that's called um, the velum is what we call that the soft palate it can sit like this in your mouth or it can start to flatten and that stops air from going through the nose um, we also part of the larynx that I forgot to mention earlier um, that's a bone that's not really part of the larynx, but the larynx suspends from this bone called the hyoid bone. It's the only floating bone in our bodies. So it sits right about here and the voice box suspends from it um, by muscles and tendons and all that good stuff. And then above it attaches to a lot of muscles in the tongue 
And then below it also attaches to the sternum and a couple of other structures, including the larynx. So we have that structure that also helps pull the larynx up or down in the throat. If the larynx is pulled up, which would be all these muscles up above the um, inside the tongue, that shortens the tube in our throats, which is then going to reduce the space that you have to resonate. Um, the soft palate, if it's too closed, will make you sound like you have a cold. It makes you hypernasal. And if it's too open, you start to sound hypernasal. So we can play around with all of that. So there's lots of structures, but essentially you're looking for as much space as you can get wherever you, you're able to get it, depending on the genre and type of sound that you're going for. Um, and then also the amount of tension. You're trying to reduce any extraneous tension in all of these muscles in the throat, mouth, and the nasal passages, there's not as many muscles as much as there's letting air in or out. And we want kind of a nice balance there. That about does it for today. If you're interested in learning more about vocal health and hygiene, I'd recommend you take my course on vocal wellness. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, otherwise, I'm Stacy Menton from singingmamashomestead.com and I wish you success on your wellness journey.